Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a quiz app in Unity and welcome to episode 13, the final tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to create a little intro splash screen and we're going to explore a couple of things in Unity itself before building and we're also going to talk about where you can go from here development wise. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development. And if you've enjoyed this series, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files, and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, the splash screen is basically like, you could think of it as an intro screen to your game. In this case, we're going to have a nice white screen, maybe with the game name and then it fades and we start the quiz itself. Now the great thing about this, the way we're going to do it, is we don't really need to change much of what we've created already. It'll do as it is. What we're going to add is a new game object, UI and raw image. This is going to be stretched across the entire screen. So we want anchor this one here and we want to set 0, 0, 0, 0 so it covers the entire screen. And I'm going to rename it to splash image and I'm going to add uh, some text so UI text and I want this centered completely so let's zero everything out uh, I want it aligned center in both and we'll just call this Jimmy's epic quiz because why not that's the name of the game uh, I'm going to change the font to the font we imported and I'm going to change the font size to probably 30 which means I do need to expand this a little more. So Jimmy's Epic Quiz. Now remember when we did some animations? Well let's do another quick little animation with this one. So let's go to our animations folder, click on animation. Uh, let's rename this text to be splash text. Uh, let's click on create and we'll have splash text anim and this one is going to be real quick. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start with it being zero on the alpha. So we're in the first keyframe remember zero. Let's go to 60 frames and let's set the alpha to the full 255. And then after another 60 frames, so in fact, let's go two seconds with this on screen. So let's go another 120 frames. So frame 180. Let's jiggle that around a bit and set it back to 255. And what that will do is it will make sure that no animation will occur between those two keyframes. So it will stay 255. Although it will animate, it will remain at 255 between those two keyframes. So let's go one extra second, so frame 240, and let's change the alpha to zero. So effectively what we've done is create a fade in and fade out effect. So if we press the record button, head to project, and then click on the splash text, let's untick loop time and press play. And we'll see that text fade in, wait for two seconds, and then fade out. So let's do the same thing with the white background. So let's go on splash image, click on animation, click on create, and we'll put splash back anim. I realize the term splash back is probably not the best thing to use there, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So let's press record again. And as always, we need to set that first keyframe. So we set the first keyframe as completely white. So alpha is going to be full 255. Now we need it to stay completely white until our splash text has disappeared. So after frame 240, let's fade out that white background. So frame 240 and let's set it back to 255 because remember we don't want anything to animate between those two keyframes so it will stay completely white. And then a second after that, another 60 frames, we want it to completely disappear. So we set the alpha as zero and then it goes straight into the quiz. 
So let's press the record button to stop. And yeah, I know it looks a bit crazy there. We can see that's covering, but don't worry about it at all. Everything should turn out quite nice. So let's change the animation that we've just created and turn loop time off. And let's press play and see the animated sequence. Cool. So now let's take the sequence even further because if you understand how Unity works, you'll know that at this point, the quiz won't work. Even though all we've done is just add um, two things, but it won't actually work. Because the problem is, can't click. Reason being is because whatever is furthest down the list in the canvas is at the forefront of everything. It means that we're not able to click those buttons because this splash image is in the way. So we need to turn that off. So we're going to create a script which will flow the sequence from the absolute start, which is this, to playing the game. I'm going to turn off the BGM so it's quiet when it starts up and then the music starts whenever we get into the game. So let's go to our scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script, we'll call this one splash to game. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So a couple of things we need to add here. First one is going to be the music variable. So public game object B G M semicolon. And although it is music we're dealing with, we've actually turned the game object itself off, not the music. So all we would need to do is turn the object back on. We don't need to theoretically worry about the music itself. It will automatically start. Next thing we need to do is declare a game object as a variable for the background. So splash, I was call it splash white. And then the text itself. So public game object splash text semicolon. So this is going to be done via a coroutine because we're going to be controlling time to some degree. Uh, it means that we don't need updates and we don't need the annotations so they can disappear. So let's start by writing that coroutine. So I enumerator, and we'll call this splash end. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, the splash screen itself, the whole sequence lasts 300 frames, which is five seconds. But we want the music to start as soon as the white starts fading into the game. So we need to wait for four seconds first. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, four. After four seconds, we'll turn the music on. So BGM dot set active, true, semicolon. And then after another second, we can turn the white background off and the text. So yield, return, new, wait four seconds, and in brackets, one. And then we'll say splash text dot set active false. And then splash white also dot set active false semicolon. And we then just need to start the coroutine from the void start section. So start coroutine and in brackets splash end open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save. And this will be the final script to get the whole game functioning. So let's head back into Unity and let's place splash to game on the master control object up here and just set those three variables. So BGM is going to be there, splash image is the white and splash text right there. Let's make sure our scene is saved and let's watch this whole sequence unfold. Cool, so everything is working as intended. And obviously you can change a couple of things to speed up the sequence, you know, it waits two seconds before it displays the next one. Like that. Uh, it's up to you how quick or how slow you want things to occur. So, uh, let's go to edit and let's go to, let's go to project settings. Now, over here, you'll find a couple of different things, but because this game is so simple, you don't really need to worry too much about what we're dealing with here. 
it might be worth going through some of these, uh, but again, it's not something that you would need to worry about too much with any of this. One thing that we are going to take a look at is the player. Now, the player is not you per se. It's the actual running of the game. So company name, it could be anything you want. My company. The product name, obviously quiz app. Uh, version, let's say version 1.1, whatever it would be. Uh, your icon will be whatever you want it to be. You can drag and drop uh, text textures here if you want to. Uh, they would obviously feed down into all of these icons here. You can change the resolution if you want to. Um, splash image, um, it's not really relevant, I don't think, but it's worth noting that splash image and a splash screen are two completely separate things, by the way. They are completely separate. For example, we're building for PC here, as you denoted right there. Um, basically, a splash screen is the introduction. So for free versions of Unity, you'll have like the Unity logo flash on the screen. That's technically a, um, a splash you could think of. Um, but yeah, it's not quite the same as what we've created here. A couple of other settings if you're building for PC. But again, because the simplicity of what we've created here, none of them are really relevant. Um, you can build for UWP. Uh, again, it functions the same as PC. It's the same kind of settings. And then you've got your iOS and Android. Um, probably worth noting just to make sure you have the correct SDKs installed, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, it's just the simple settings. Uh, quality is another one you could probably look at. It's just a way of defining uh, how good it looks. I mean, if you're creating a simple app like this, it's not really relevant most of the time. Um, if you're creating a big, massive open world that you want to look fantastic, then yeah, it probably would matter. But when it comes to some of these settings, you don't need to worry about it too much at all. The main thing that you would want to do is test and play the game. And you would do that by going to File, Build Settings. And we went to this a long time ago, clicking Add Open Scenes to make sure it's in there. And then build and run to test. If you're on PC, Mac, and Linux, like I say, you would end up with a standalone executable to test. Um, but I, th I think testing is very important. So if you're at this point now and you're not sure what to do in terms of does your game work, does it not, where do you go from here? The best thing that I can recommend is if you build it for PC first, test it and make sure everything functions as normal. You can then also get it working uh, functionally on a mobile device. Yeah, you can, if you go through the package manager, find something that way to do it. If not, there are plenty of tutorials. I've even got tutorials on how you would do it. Uh, but all I can say at this point is test, test, test. Make sure your game is functional, it's working, no bugs. And if there are bugs, fix them. Easy. <laughs> So where do you go from here development wise? Well, this series has been what, about two and a half hours. So it's very primitive. It's very simple. Um, but if you are brand new to Unity and you've made it this far, then you've at least got yourself up to a better level than beginner. You've learned things and you can apply that knowledge to other things. I have loads, like I, th I think I have over a thousand tutorials now at this point uh, on my channel of different things that you can build and create in Unity. Some things as simple as this, other things a bit more complex, other things more fun. Um, so if you want to know where to go, you want to look at create new things, take a look at my playlists and just find something you want to do, whether it's survival horror, a racing game, a platform game, an endless runner, uh, all kinds of stuff. Just give it a go. And hopefully, hopefully, You've come this far and you have a nice quiz app. I'd love to see the end result of what some of you guys have created as well. And I hope I will see you in another one of my tutorials. So thank you very much for sticking with me for the past couple of hours. And I'll see you around. Thanks very much for watching, guys.